Hi folks and welcome to another video and oh my gosh I need a haircut give me one second Woo! I like it defluffed as well very good my name is Mark Lay and in this video and with this very handy dandy consistency gauge completely free and downloadable I'm going to show you how you and I and everyone else on the internet never have to guess their consistencies ever again. All right, I have you down here. I am uh, so, so excited about showing you this. I've actually done this video about 10 times now at this point, but my ADHD keeps kicking in and I find myself talking about squirrels and lampshades and all that. <laughs> so if this video is full of edits, that's exactly why. <laughs> okay, consistency. Consistency of paints for me has been a complete pain in the arse. And I don't mind saying that. Despite the fantastic efforts of people like Kathleen at Cos Creations and Mandy at Hope Designs and Leslie Onstad in, uh, at Colour Art, they're constantly putting up little ideas of, of measuring your, your, your your uh, consistency and it's usually um, things like holding up something and saying it has like a mound there and or it's um, it's consistency of warm honey or something like this I heard um, Kathleen say one of her mixes which was a very wet mix was like uh, milk um, and these are all fantastic ideas and ways of of trying to measure it the problem that I have is that it's it's a opinion like how how thick is milk is it you know is it low fat milk is it heavy milk you know, all these little things that make it really difficult for me and um, as a beginner I remember it being just absolutely insanely hard to have the confidence that what I'm seeing is what I've got in front of me so for me I found it very very difficult Okay, I've lost my train of thought again. Oops, ADHD kicked in again. Told you, it was gonna catch me. Okay, now it's gone again. Okay, so, <laughs> so this is an idea that I've been working on for a while and it was just when I seen these videos again pop up by everybody talking about consistency, I thought I just, I'm gonna finish this idea and get it out there for everyone to see. And this is the idea of a consistency gauge. Hmm, what could you do with a consistency gauge, if I could even say it? Right, basically three ways I reckon that we can use a gauge, something like this, or at least this technique. So now I've seen a few times where YouTube creators have been popping up, uh, let's say a paper plate, and they put some paint on their paper plate or on a sheet of paper and you would let's say tilt tilt up i'll put some on here just to show you there's a blob there there's a nice blob there there's a nice blob there now this is particularly useful if all you're doing is checking out your paint and you want to know the consistency how it all is now if you stand that up there and let it run you're instantly able to see there that the blue paint is a little bit wetter and that nice, lovely, that color. <laughs> we would have an argument talking about that color there now. I'd say that's like aquamarine type of color and I'd say it's a bluey and my wife would say it's a green, but we, we will not fight. So from this, you can tell that if you added a little bit more water to this one and slightly less more water to that one, that you would be able to make your paints even if this is what you want to do. Now that's the big question. A lot of times people want exactly the same consistency over all their paints for different styles. And this is how you could do that. That to me is a lot, a lot easier way of mixing your own paints just for your own painting. That's, that really, that's all it's really for. And I suppose that would be what I would consider the first way of using this technique, using just plain paper. 
There's another thing that you could do, and this is really just for your own self, really, because let's say I've done a painting, this is all drying now. Let's say I've done a painting and these were the colors that I used and someone comes along and says, I really like that. Any chance you could do me one? And you're like, okay, I know the colors, but the consistency, I'm just guessing again. But at least with this, you're able to look and see how long roughly your, your um, paints went down the page. So you know the consistency, you'd be able to replicate that a lot easier. And that would really be this kind of like the second way that you could use this technique I suppose to uh, to see your consistencies now the third way is really the reason that I've been wanting to develop this to something like this and that is for teaching others now I know that as a beginner I really struggled I wanted to get the consistencies just right and I know that as a beginner when you don't know something you don't know what it feels like. You don't know, know what that consistency is like until you actually have it in your hand. Like for instance, if someone like Kathleen was to come over here and to hand me a pot of paint and mix it around and say, that is what it's like. Then I'd be able to see it and feel it in my hand. I'd know it, it's tangible. But to see it on the screen, it's just, it is difficult. It's just sort of like, oh, I don't know, I'm not sure. So as a teaching tool, this is going to be very, very useful. So let me demonstrate this in a kind of a teaching capacity as such. Okay, I've got some paints here that I've mixed up using the Canela Siraco uh, video number 63 for Dutch pours. So this is, according to the mathematics uh, on, on her video, this is exactly what it should look like. But there isn't a measurement as such, right? So if we start off with a sheet, a new sheet, and this is just a plain sheet of paper, and that's an important thing to realize, and I'll show you that a little bit later as to why that's important. So this would be the wetter of the consistencies. So even if you're doing a wetter pour, like a, uh, a cloud pour or a pearl pour, you're gonna see how this is gonna help you identify the exact consistency of the paint that you have right got these lads here so the other two the first two techniques i showed you with just the paper is fine for you just to record the consistency of your paint if you're going to teach it has to be measurable so the next thing that we have to bring into this equation is time so if i put a blob of paint here and I stand it up for a certain amount of time, then you're gonna have a measurement and the time that the measurement is. So then it's a repeatable thing. So you'll be able to, a person in a different country will be able to pick up the same paint, mix it the way you said, and get the exact consistency. So I'll demonstrate with these lads. This is a Pebio paint mixed with the Dutch pour mix from uh, video 63 from Canela Siraco. That is an Amsterdam paint, as far as I know. Same mix, I think this is Amsterdam as well. And the issue really is, is that although these are the same brand, a lot of the time they have different water content in the paint. So then when you mix it, you're gonna have slightly different consistencies. So if you want to get a, a whole row of paint that is the exact same consistency, you're gonna have problems because it doesn't work out like that. Now, so we got them there. Now, if we stand this up and we count the five, this is where, this is how the system works, right? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, and stop. Now, there you go. Now we have in front of us actual information about what the consistency like is for these paints. We can see that these two are very similar. These two are a little bit wetter and this one's even wetter again. And that's to do with the paints themselves having a certain amount of water in them because I've put the exact amount of water and flow troll in each of those. So because we've put time here, now we are able to say 
that this color here, this Pevio paint, is six and a half at five seconds. So we know now that someone in the other side of the country can mix up the Pebio paint with that recipe and if they get it to six and a half at five seconds, that is exactly the same as the person that you're watching. So we're able to measure now exactly what the consistency is for each paint and adjust them whichever way we want to. We add a little bit more water here or add a bit more paint to bring it back if we don't want it to be uh, too, too wet. So for instance, if there was a YouTube creator out there and they did a painting and they used this guide, they would be able to show you exactly what their consistency is. So then you're able to repeat it exactly. So then you have a much higher chance of getting the same result. Now, what you'll notice is that the wetter ones, like this uh, Dutch pour mix, or the mix for the cloud pour or pearl pour, I'm going to suggest that you do it on just paper. Because um, what I've done is I've actually laminated one of these pages to make it a laminated surface. And I know that paint will travel further on a laminated surface. And we don't want to travel too far here because we lose the number. But that's just something that you have to keep in mind. And I'll show you what I mean near the end. Okay, so the next one I'm going to do is kind of like a medium mix paint. This is kind of like paint that you'd have for open cups or split cups, dirty cups, that type of thing. So I have some paint mixed here. So I'm just going to, this is mixed with a, a pouring medium and a, a little bit of water just because it was quite thick. So we just wanted to get it to a, just roughly using my eye, roughly the same consistency. So now I'll be able to use this to accurately measure. So it's important that you get roughly the same size blob of paint, which is why the circle's there. And uh, if you do that, then you know you're gonna get roughly the same amount of paint traveling down the page. Now we do the same thing, count to five, stand it up and count to five. Here we go, one, two, three, four, five, and stop. Now, we know that these three are roughly the same, but if that's all we want, we know that these three are roughly the same, and we know we just need to add a little bit more paint onto that. But if we're teaching, and we want people to get the exact same results, we know that this is five. So it's got a C number, or a consistency number of five. That's about 5.2, and that's six, 6.1 if you wanna say that. And that's 8.8 .8, if you want to say that but it means it's an accurate measurement so that would be five over five seconds so five over five so that would be the c number for that paint so that means that of course again if anyone wants to replicate that that's what you've got to get now having your guide laminated or having it as just plain paper does play a part in the uh, measurement at the end obviously if you do a test on some paint on laminated paper you do need to say that when you're teaching it if it's on laminated paper or else they might do it on just ordinary plain paper and get a different reading so now we're going to move on to thick mix paint like blooms and swipes that type of stuff the what i have here is actually uh, i have some vivid enamel i have some uh, polypore from color art and i have some pigments there's one of them here this is actually a bit of pebio paint or Fabio <laughs> I can tell straight away that that's not going to move very far at all but that's Fabio paint directly into poly pour but we're going to see what it's like now these are some fantastic colors from color arts uh, ancient treasure set which has just come out and I'm going to be doing a video on that very very soon but I've got a few of these colors here in poly pour and I have a home mix that I make that Erica Hughes uh, created and I use that and it's for, I've got one here that's just for uh, color art pigments. And then I have another one that I use, which doesn't have a thickening agent in it as well. And that's really just for um, uh, tube paints. But uh, we'll see how they go. So I'll, I'll show you which ones we've got. This is uh, just for polypore and uh, the pigment. I'll try and get a blob there. Try and make that nice and, whoa, get up. 
There you go. And here's another lovely car. Now, I don't have the names of all these cars at the moment, but you will find out about them very soon when I do a video. Here's some more. And this is all in the polypore. I think I might have got a little bit more in that than I needed to. Um, now, here, look, there's some Pebio. This will this will be. <laughs> This is just straight into polypore, so you can see what that looks like. I can't see that moving very far at all. Now this is a golden paint, but that's in the other home mix. And uh, we'll throw that there. Yeah. And then this is a lovely, a beautiful green. I kind of, I can't remember what it's called. I call it a PSR green. <laughs> right. There we go, and that's also with the home mix. Now I'll tell you what I have here as well. Where's it gone? Here we go. Here's a bit of prism pour directly from the bottle. So you have to give that a good mix to get all the mica up from the bottom. But uh, this will be interesting to see. Now, so what we're gonna get here now is a nice little uh, line of information. Are we all ready? I think I'll count in Irish this time. I'm sick of counting in English. Here we go. A hain, a doe, a tree, a cahar, a cuig, a stod. Now, look at that. This is some information for us. So, the colour art in the polypore is all about a 1 to 1.5, around that sort of. I might have just had different amounts there, which is why it might do that. This one is the one without the thickening agent, it's the home made one. This is the one with the thickening agent which is why it's a little bit less. And there you go, that's the uh, prism pour. So we know that prism pour directly out of the bottle mixed has a C score of three over five. Now, yeah, three over five. Whereas the polypore mix is like one to maybe two, so 1.75, if you wanna do that, uh, over five, because we counted it in five seconds. Uh, and the same with this, the home mix that I have, is actually a, a four, a four over five. So now I'm able to share that with whoever I'm doing a painting with, or if I'm someone who's looking at a painting or looking at an artist, I can now copy that and make sure that my mix is on that as well, which is really, really, really handy. Now, but I'll tell you what we'll do, I haven't done this. I forgot to put it on here, but this is a cell activator with Amsterdam and Australian flow trial. So we'll ignore these ones because as soon as I lift it up, they're gonna go even more. But we'll have a look at this one just, just for the devilment of it all. There we go. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, and stop. There we go. <laughs> Cell activator has a C number of 11 over five. So now we know that the consistency of that is 11 over five. Now, I love all you guys that are showing things like this and going, the, you know, the mound on this stays there for a second. I love you and you're all fantastic. I watched it for years, thousands of videos. I just think that this is just a more accurate way of showing it. And uh, I think it's gonna be really awesome. Okay, just to say it again, the flow troll uh, and Amsterdam paint cell activator mix there is 11 over five on laminated paper. And this that's the important part. If you were to put this on just plain paper, it would not go as far. So that's okay if you're gonna do everything on plain paper, just as long as you actually say that it is plain paper, so then people can replicate it. But with this, it's on laminated paper. So I would say all of these numbers, that there is a five, over five on laminated paper. So now I'm gonna clean this here and just do one more, just for the fun of it. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one on plain paper. So as long as you remember when you're writing it down, you say plain paper or laminated paper. Here we go. Okay, here we go. I have 
fun and one two three four five and stop boom so there you have it folks an easier way of measuring consistency with paint that you can share with everybody and that's what i'm hoping you guys will do share this video on all your facebook groups uh, share it wherever you can and if you're a, a youtube creator and you don't want to put this video on your channel i understand that obviously just uh, maybe download the link and do your own video and show your subscribers how they can accurately measure the consistency of their paints to download this file it's completely free you just go to my website porescraperepeat.com look for uh, shop and downloads and it's going to be there you just click on the download it just downloads straight away i'm not looking for email addresses or anything it's just there to share so just grab it download it print off a bunch of copies and then you can start documenting all of your colors all your paints and uh, consistency won't be such a hard thing to deal with so a bit of a news flash as well i am at the moment working on something that is going to be a companion to this and is going to make everything a whole lot easier. So make sure you stay tuned and subscribe so you can see that video, which is probably gonna be in the next week or so. So now, thank you very much, folks. That is the end of the presentation of this bad boy here. Um, what's going to follow now is just going to be a shameless plug for uh, everything that I'm endorsing. So if you're happy with the video and you don't want to hear me waffle on about stuff that I'm selling thank you very much and I'll see you guys on the next video for all you guys that have stayed on and you want to hear about what I've got to hawk um, I am an affiliate with color art and I do have an affiliate number uh, and that is Markle day 1020 and that will get you 20% off everything that you get from color art get that out of the way first obviously acrylic pouring tools you're going to find at pourscraperepeat.com which i hope you come and visit and um, i also have acrylic apparel which is all my t-shirts and cups and mugs and all that sort of stuff and that's at psrapparel.com i leave all the links down below and i just want to say thank you very much for listening to me and enjoy painting and no matter what you do do it all with a smile on your face God bless. Good luck.